Hi everybody, Courtney here to talk to you about an old-fashioned word that you may not have heard in a while from the Depression. It was generally thought of during the Depression, and that is called rationing. It's been used during war and drought and all kinds of things throughout history. Rationing just means to cut back or to use just enough, um, but to not have use too much. And I think it's something that we can do from an ethical standpoint. We can use it because it's a need, because we're trying to save water, electricity, gas, um, because we're trying to save on food. And it can feel very constrictive if you don't kind of open your mind to thinking about it differently. And I had this, believe it or not, I was making a sandwich the other day. I don't eat a lot of like vegan processed food, like vegan cheese and meat, but every once in a while I want a grilled cheese sandwich and they have plant butter and plant cheese for that now. So this plant cheese that I love, it's very expensive. That's not a problem for me. I can afford it. I don't eat it a lot. As a matter of fact, I have to be careful not to let it go bad. Um, but I wanted a grilled cheese sandwich and my husband always asks for one piece of cheese and I like to, I like it thick, but I thought, well, maybe I'll just try this just cause I've always done it that way. Maybe I'll just try one piece. Cause I was trying to, I had gained a little weight from being on steroid therapy and I was trying to get that weight off. And so I had one, I made it with one piece of cheese and it was, I couldn't tell a difference. And I thought, you know, maybe I should begin to think about this in the rationing. Like, where would I not miss if I kind of rationed out with food or with other things? And so I kind of do this anyway without ever thinking about it. Probably picked it up because my grandparents raised me and they had gone through the Depression and several wars and they had to went through rations. So they had to ration flour and yeast and, and all kinds of things. My grandmother darned or repaired their socks, their clothes. They fixed their shoes. They put new heels on their shoes when they got worn out. We didn't buy things unless we needed them. Um, my grandparents died very financially comfortable, but they always rationed and lived very frugally. They were not formally educated, but they were self-educated and they did pretty well for themselves even though I grew up thinking we were poor. And I don't think that that's healthy either. I thought we didn't have the money because of the way we lived our life was so different than the people around me, but I was the only person I knew being raised by grandparents at that time. So when we think about rationing, I'm gonna give you a few examples of how I use rationing. So with time, I often pace myself throughout the day, and I've been doing this for years. I set a timer, like for 30 minutes, I'm going to pick up the house, and I have like a little routine I do every day, or for 30 minutes, I'm going to clean a bedroom or a, a room. So I had been sick, nearly bedridden. I could get up and do a little bit with my autoimmune disease, and my husband had COVID, and we were split up in the house, and I couldn't get the whole house clean at once. So every day, I was able to do a little light house cleaning for about 30 minutes a day. I would get the Windex and the dusting stuff, and I would go and do one room for 30 minutes. I did that every day for like a week, and I got the whole house clean, and it wasn't hard to do at all, and I was able to keep up with it better. Um, so just kind of setting yourself a time. They have now come out with tons of research. It's in books like Atomic Habits. You'll see it all over the internet. Of uh, Just getting started is the hardest part. There's a thing now that's really popular called the two minute rule. Just do two minutes of something. Because generally, if you do two minutes of something, you'll go ahead and do more. So getting started is always the hardest part. So a lot of times I will set my timer, 10 minutes of cleaning the kitchen, you know, a lot of times we'll, I'll, we'll want to put off cleaning the kitchen or some kind of chore. And then I'll set the timer for 10 minutes and I'm surprised that I can get the whole kitchen clean in about 10 minutes. If I think, oh, it's only going to take me 10 minutes, I'm far more likely to do the thing than if I'm feeling like, oh, clean the kitchen. I don't feel like that tonight. But when I reframe it, it changes it. The other thing I do is like obligations. So Again, recently with my autoimmune, um, Sjogren's and rheumatoid arthritis and long COVID, 
I can only go for so long. I used to run all my errands on Fridays because that was my day off. And I live in a tourist town, so it's the worst day to run errands, really. And um, I'm just not able to do that anymore because my stamina is fairly low. Like, I know I can't exercise and run errands all day. Yesterday, I ran errands for about four or five hours, and I wasn't even hardly able to exercise last night. So what I do now is called pacing. So I will say, what is the most important thing for me today? Like today, I spent about an hour in my office paying bills, making some phone calls. I spent about an hour cleaning the house, um, and I just pace myself all throughout the day. I take, I if I do something that's cognitively tasking, or, that boy, was that even English? <laughs> that's a cognitive task, clearly. Maybe I've done too many of these today. Or that's a physical task. I try to rest in proportion to that. So if I get up and clean the house, I might sit down and watch YouTube videos for 30 minutes to an hour. I try really hard to pace myself between physical and sedentary or resting task, if that makes sense. If something is extremely cognitively engaging, like uh, paying bills or dealing with, um, you know, the phone company or something like that. I try to take a break from that afterwards. The next thing is with food. I try to measure my food out. I know that sounds crazy, but um, I just, I've just gotten in a habit of it. I don't even really have to do it anymore. But like I will take a cup or a half a cup and I'll put the veggies on my plate. Um, that way it just keeps me from over serving myself and oftentimes I get full my eyes are often bigger than my stomach and I don't like to waste food or I will go ahead and portion out so when I cook pasta so I raised four kids they're all with born within four years and so I was used to cooking for an army and now I've had to get used to cooking for two people so when I measure out like the pasta last night to make pasta I measured out four servings of pasta which was two cups dry and I will go ahead and take half of it and put it away for lunches the next day and we would eat and we actually don't even eat that much. But when I measure things out, I measure them out in servings because it keeps us from overeating. It helps to waste, keep down on food waste, which a lot of waste goes into the landfill and just rots there. It's not good for the landfill and it saves a ton of money. And if you followed me, you know I'm always saying, it's easier to save a dollar today than it is to make a thousand dollars. So I'm constantly being aware of that. It helps with my weight. It helps with waste. It helps with our budget. It helps the planet. The next thing is exercise. So I've always exercised, but a few years ago on when I had an Alexa and I got rid of it on purpose, but when I had an Alexa, they had these like three and seven minute works out, workouts and you could say, Alexa, play a seven minute workout. And It'd be like, okay, do, you know, five jumping jacks, do 10 squats, all this. So I started getting on YouTube and I found when I got rid of Alexa that I could find like three minute workouts, four minute workouts. And then I would find like these courses that were free online of doing like these seven minute workouts every day or something. And I'm like, I can commit to that. Like I can commit to five minutes or seven minutes a day. Generally, eventually I ended up doing like 30 minutes a day. But, um, and more, <laughs> because I love to do so many different things. So right now I'm recovering from illness. I can't get my heart rate up too high. So now what I do is I do about uh, 10 to 20 minutes of yoga every day and five to 10 minutes of meditation, sometimes just two. Um, I give myself about 20 minutes a day of mobility. That's all I do right now. I work on mobility and meditation. Um, I'm not where I want to be physically, but you know, I am healthy. I'm thin. I'm fairly fit for someone who can't do a whole lot as far as, you know, it's just that my lungs and heart aren't, aren't keeping up with what my body wants to do. So commit to doing a little bit. If you can't commit to doing 20 minutes, we all have to say to ourselves, if I can't do three minutes of exercise a day, my life is completely out of control, especially if we recognize that we're spending hours on social media or in front of the television, but we can't commit a few minutes a day or 10 minutes a day to exercise. Just do something. Do what you like. The best kind of exercise and the best kind of meditation and the best time to do it is when you'll do it. Um, so, 
Let's see, I had work. So I often will do work before play. That's something I heard many years ago. I think I heard Denzel Washington say it. Of all people, he taught his kids work before play. I taught my children that too. I do not believe in being a workaholic, but I definitely believe that we need to get our work done before we play, but there needs to be some balance in that. It can't be all work, 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 work. So I often will finish my, I plan on getting everything done for the day by about seven o'clock at night, 7.30, and then from 7.30 on, no work, right? I put limits and guardrails on my life. Um, I will often set my timer or a plan to set at my desk for an hour or two at a time. I often get up and walk around if it's more than an hour, but um, to just sit down and do my work again. Timers, uh, having a list, having a plan. Can you tell I'm very calculated in my life? Very calculated. Money. This one is great. I set limits on how much I can spend on something before I go out. I don't ever go out like willy-nilly spending money. So, um, and now it's just second nature for me. So like I know if I'm buying an Airbnb, like what my limit is for that Airbnb. I ration my driving um, so that I don't spend too much gas. I, like today is Thursday. I'm planning on being home all day. Um, on tomorrow is Friday, I have to go to the doctor and I will run errands when I go there. But I ration my gas. Again, I don't have to financially. That is an ethical standpoint for me about not being wasteful. I very much believe, I mean, I'm a Christian, but I'm very much in the spirit of like, you know, spiritual realm of all I accept all religions within reason you know that we are here to preserve this planet for the future generations that we have a spiritual and ethical and moral obligation to not waste and to not take more than our fair share and as Americans we use far more resources than most other countries in the world and it hurts the people who are the least of these you know I could go off in a tangent, but I am going to say a little bit about this. When we consume a lot of meat and we consume a lot of the world's resources, we take from the poor nations who cannot afford to defend for themselves. I'm not saying everyone should be vegan, but like we can all do better, right? We can all do better. We can use less gas. We can buy less crap that we don't need. Um, we know that a lot of our clothes are still made in sweatshops. There are still children working all over the world. And I don't want to turn this into a completely negative video, but like we can all do better. And one way to do better is to ration how much you use. So for like, let's say for three months, do you really need any more clothes? Could you possibly um, do without buying any clothes for three months? Could you possibly um, donate some of the clothes you don't need to a homeless shelter? Could you buy used at a boutique before you buy new? So see, not everything is just about saving money. Being frugal does help the planet. It helps those that are less fortunate than us. But it also, you know, it has many, many benefits. And a lot of people look down upon frugality, but there's many reasons to do it. The other thing was to do things like um, wash your clothes less, use less detergents and things like that. Sometimes... All we need is soap and water to clean our house or sweep our floors. We don't always have to use harsh chemicals. We don't need to wash our clothes every day unless you're my husband and you get filthy dirty every day. My husband does three times the laundry I do. My husband has a dirty job. That is understandable. But if, and I have actually gotten him where he's, <clears throat> if he goes out and ride horses one day and he wears his blue jeans for like two hours, and they're not really muddy, I ask him to wear them again if he doesn't mind. Like, if you didn't get that shirt dirty, wear it again. Me, I could probably do, honestly, a full load of laundry, maybe two darks and whites a week. I just re-wear everything multiple times. Um, I use an apron every day when I'm cooking and cleaning in order to not get my clothes dirty. So just thinking about that, I mean, obviously I wash my socks and underwear because that's sanitary, but like this sweatshirt, I'll wear it two or three times or until I get something on it, I'll wear an apron over it. And because A, it keeps my clothes looking nicer longer and it just helps to not use so much water. 
other things you can do is wait till you get a full load of laundry or a full load of dishes before you wash them. Um, rationing out your pet's food. My pets are no example of that. <clears throat> I don't even know. They're all like little tater tots. Look at this. This little boy, he is a chunk. Look, he's he doesn't really look like it too bad here. See, there you go. My girls, <clears throat> my Great Pyrenees is 125 pounds. I don't even know about my other dog because we have house... We have a vet that comes to the house, but like I'm trying to break their treats in half. I've also, when I get some more time and when I have time, I try to make more of their food to not just give them kibble. Like I'll cook extra sweet potatoes and potatoes and peas, that's right, and corn and things like that that they can eat, uh, brown rice, things like that to help supplement their, their food because that kibble and the dog food, you know, that didn't even, wasn't even around, I think, until the 30s. So just being mindful of not being wasteful, of using less, saving on calories, our weight, because we all know if we have a leaner BMI, we're far less likely to be unhealthy. Um, obviously, you need healthy calories, not unhealthy calories. Um, the planet, our wallet, there's so many reasons to ration your time, your resources, your energy, your food, um, the world's resources. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope it makes sense. It's been on my mind really heavy and I hope that you find value in it. Please subscribe and like if you've stayed with me this long. Thank you. Bye-bye.